Ladies, come in. You see the oil dust? Do you see this? He's here. Miss Gabby, pull in. Tell him Sandy. Just pull in. Tell him something. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Anyway, y'all know what it is. Like I said, gbamusic.com. If you're here, you can show one stream clock. Tell a friend to tell a friend. I'm Miss Gabby, today's guest. We have, oh my God, Nigerian woman. Speak ego, like that's got that sound sexy. Maybe he gives up now. Give the sound sexy. She can say, we gotta get to say something. I don't know what it is, but he's gonna say something. I'm gonna bat my eyelashes, and it's gonna sound crazy. <laughs> anyway, cover supermodel, two time heavyweight champion of the Golden Gloves. Let's talk a bull ass today. And I know y'all see him, y'all wanna know. I know, stop talking. Bring, bring that gorgeous black man in. This is Ingo. How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I'm, I'm happy to have you. I've been looking at your pictures, prepping. Oh, I'm sorry, prepping for the show, going over the pictures, doing doing research. Yeah, I, I was researching, so I'm fully prepared for today's show. All right, I'm prepared too. All right, let's get it. Ladies, ladies call in. Guys, call in. We'll be hanging out for a while. For a while, we'll be. Feel free to call. We talk. Modern, yeah, we're talking modern sports, light, we're talking, oh yeah, we just had a minute to spread, that was, that was good, so with the ice will be kicking in soon, we're going to be talking family, we're talking documentaries and foundations, so what I need y'all to do is at some point in the break, I need you to get a pen out, because we're going to give you some websites, he's got a, his own charity, we're going to talk about that later though, we're going to leave that for last, because that's one of the most important things we want to cover. Keep that fresh in your mind. So let's go back. Let's go back. Nigerian born. Or were you born here in Massachusetts? Yeah, I, was born, I was born in Massachusetts, okay. raised in Nigeria. Okay. And you didn't move from Nigeria until you were like 18? Yes. You don't have a bit of accent. When I get mad, it comes out. Ah, God. <laughs> Yeah. According, to, according to your record, we hate to see you get mad. <laughs> I don't know. The record says we don't want to see you get mad. The flight say man is kind of sexy. I don't know. Look at the box way. When the checks go clear, the accent comes out. Yeah, don't I'm sure. misinterpret. Okay. <laughs> don't I'm sure they say. All right. Exactly. Exactly. Don't do it. Don't, don't, do don't it. we don't want to have that. Don't do it. We're a happy group of people. If you did do it, then you heard it first. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, was the publicist will come out and clear everything up. He was antagonized. That's all it is. That's the story we're going with. Yeah. So born in Massachusetts. Now you went to Yukon. Yes. So see, this is what I'm going with this. Fine. Yes, he's fine. Yes, he can bash somebody's head in. Blah blah blah. He's super smart. Computer science, yep. right? Yep. And then from there, he works for Department of Transportation in Connecticut. Right. Um, that was actually when they were starting to put together the whole GPS okay. thing. So we worked, we worked on doing all that, setting all that up, and um, after while I was working there. I got poached by another computer company that was in New York. So a lot of people think that I moved to New York for modeling, but I didn't. I actually came to be an IT specialist, you know? I came to work at 9 to 5. At 9 to 5, right. So they, um, they, I met them at a conference down in Florida. And uh, so they were like, you know, how would you like to come and work for us in New York? I was like... I'm there, right. you know, because it's been my dream for so long to move to New York. Ever since I was in Connecticut, you know, I, I you know Connecticut was cool, right. but I knew that the life would be in Just New, York. New York. Right, everything is here. Energy, people, all of it, you know, opportunities. So I came, I started working for uh, the company, got my apartment, and um, three months later, I got laid off, you know. But you know, like, I wouldn't totally blame. Right. I wouldn't totally blame them for it. Part of it was my. A lot of it was my fault too, because I was young and I was, you know, you know, having Running. such a big job. I, I, I thought I was a man. Right. So I, like, I show up when I show up. Wow. You know? But you were kind of a man because you were teaching the engineers, correct? Yeah. You were training yeah. engineers on how to draw. Yeah. Using that sounds like being the man to me. 
I mean, I, it was it was, it was, it was a really cool job, you know. Okay. Like, I was teaching engineers, architects, because they were drawing by hand. Right. You know, um, and a lot of them, you know, like, would have, would always be upset when right. I would walk in because they're probably like, who's, who's this, this kid, kid <laughs> trying to get me to change the way I've been doing things for decades? Right. You know? So most of them were resistant, but at the end, you know, it was either that or get fired. Right. <laughs> you know, so they had, so they knew they had to get on board. You know, but it was a really cool job. I really, really enjoyed it. Right. But, you know, it was... It, life always happens the way it's supposed to happen. Absolutely. You know, because it wasn't... Un- if, if, I, if I had kept that job, I probably wouldn't be doing all the stuff that I would be doing. I definitely would... Yeah, those nine clouds get comfortable. Those exactly. checks get very comfortable. The benefits get very comfortable. Very comfortable. You know, you know where what's going to be on each check. Right. You know that you have life, you know, you have insurance, you have health insurance, everything is covered. Right. You know, and and most people would be comfortable to keep a job. Like Absolutely. That, you know, but, um, but once I lost the job, I was just like, this might be a sign. Right. You know, I, I don't want to go back to corporate. This is, you know, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity that I'm living in New York. Right. I can do and become anything. Nice. That I want to become. Right. You know, and I just didn't want to be confined to a desk from nine to five. I can't imagine you being the corporate man. Yeah, yeah, I was I, for years. I've seen some very nice pictures of Susan Todd. So that's not it, the issue. I just, I can't imagine. Yeah, just I don't see you suit and tie behind the desk, yeah. not at all. And and the, and, the, and and the interesting thing is, I actually loved it because I love computers so much, and that's what helps me in my career right now. Right. Because I do so much of my own work. You okay. Know? Like I can edit my own images. I can edit video. Okay. Like I, I have it actually on a blog that I wrote today okay. about the business. You know. Um, Check out my blog. It's getingo.com. It's G-E-T-I-N-G-O.com. I have a blog. I write a blog every day. Okay. Every day. So today, I wrote a blog about, you know, staying ahead of the business, staying ahead of the game. Okay. You know, so it's not just about just being a model and or being an actor, enjoying taking pictures. Yes, it is fun. Right to take pictures, you know, because you play and, you you know, it's fun. But this is a business. It's right. not called an entertainment business for, for nothing. nothing. Absolutely. This is Absolutely. the business of entertainment. Right. You know what I mean? So you have to stay on top of what's going on in the game. Right. You know, like I started after 2011, after 9-11 happened, mm-hmm. I just started to see that marketing – the marketing dollars had changed. Where the marketing money was going had changed. Right. You know, and it, it wasn't so much put in for black projects or Absolutely. for black models, black actors. Right. And if you started, you know, if you watch movies, for if 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 you know, from a lot of films that have black actors in it, you already have, you know, they got to be. They, they're not using. Up and coming actors, right? These are all established exactly. actors that they know is going to draw the money. Not even actors, rappers, right? Singers. Neo is in Red Tails, right? You know, I didn't know he was an actor. No, <laughs> you he's know, not. But he's, a, you know, he's, a, you know. he's a name. Yeah, exactly. He's a name. He's a, he's a name, brand. and he's a guy that will guarantee asses in the seats, right? And that's what it's about. And that that's money. That's what it's all about. You know, Method Man, right? Is in Red Tails. Right, you know, right. A film that I support wholeheartedly. Absolutely, I'm proud. You know? Going during the week, can't yeah, wait. Man. And um, you know, but so now, so, so I noticed that that was what was happening. Ti in the right. movie, you know, was Chris Brown in the movie, you know. So my, so the idea and the way the business was going is you have to separate yourself. Right. You can't just be a model on a page, a dude in a suit. Right. On a page to survive in this game. You have to be very proactive. You have to be proactive. Seen and heard. Yes. And you have to create a brand, build a brand, and then promote the brand. Right. 
So the thing is, you have to make yourself known. You have to basically make yourself a celebrity in order to work. Right. You know, or else you just be, oh, there's that guy. Right. That's that the guy we always in. see at exactly. the club or we see here with so-and-so. Or there's the guy that was in, in this video, in this music video. Right. You know, but nobody knows your name because you don't do any marketing. Well, how did, I mean, aside from doing your own blogs, yeah. how did your name become so large? What, what stuff did you take to get it that grand? Well, the first thing I did was I created a website. Mm -hmm. And I wanted it to be a website that if you saw the website, you would remember it. Okay. You know, I wanted I wanted to make that it the, the website best. you started. Yeah. That was the original one. I would remember that. No, that's not. That's no. not, that's actually that. What you know, getingo.com has changed three times. Okay. This is the third design, and my favorite design actually. I like you know, that design. Yeah. It looks like a male enhancement um, ad, though. Male enhancement. Mm -hmm. ad? Hey, listen. <laughs> <laughs> you know, sorry, I mean, we're sorry. All, we're all about enhancing. You know, we're well, all about I, I tell you, out of a lot of celebrities that came up, you about the first one that name is Gabby Blush. Yeah, I usually, I usually have all the men blushing. I'm like, yeah, that looks like a male enhancement, but it does. It is. Um, it is a website that somebody's going to remember. Yes. Smiling like Bob, right? That's what they say? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I remember that yeah. commercial. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We're going to get into that. Yeah, he's done commercials, yeah. movies, major oh, yeah. magazines. We're going to go into that also. We're getting to that. But, um, yeah. go ahead. But, yeah, so, to... you know, it's, it's all about staying ahead of the game. So, right. I had a website when... A lot of other models and actors didn't have websites. Mm -hmm. You know, they would always ask me, like, why do you have a website? What's that going to do? Nobody's going to book you. You know, they would want to go through an agent or right. a manager. Or Somebody's whatever. taking their money. Exactly. So, taking the cut of the check. <laughs> so I knew that the internet was worldwide. Right. So somebody in China could go online and find me. So I did, so I, I set up the website set up the right the keywords that pertain to me right you know so i had keywords like black male model right. african-american male model you know things like that because if somebody goes and you know goes you know goes on google and they are searching for someone like me right they would say black male model right so if you have those keywords attached to your website you're gonna be in the site, first page exactly so now, if you Google black male model, yeah, my site one. is number three. And How the, are you the, number one? What are we that's putting there to... Click. Go Google. Go to my website. That's Start by clicking most, me. most downloadable number, black male. Exactly. That'll get most him to number one. The, the, the reason uh, the sites that are above me are blogs that show a picture of a different guy every day. Okay. So it's not even like a specific. Right, it's not a featured modeling. person. Yeah, it's not a one person site. Right. You know, they feature a different guy every day. Okay. So, um, so for that reason, they're able to get a higher ranking. Okay. You know, but to have a one person okay. site be that high worldwide. Right. You know, so anywhere you anywhere you search black model or coming up, up number, three. number three, that's a big damn you know? deal. Uh, Whether y'all know that. You know I'm taking the tags and putting it up on my show. Help me. Yeah. <laughs> Please do. Yeah. Please do. Because, you know, that, there's no other way to search for someone that looks like me. You know, if you know, if you see, if, you see, if you're online, you're looking, or you see a video, you're like, oh, what's the name of that? Black right. male, male model. model. That's him. <laughs> or you could just, once you find his page, just put him in your favorites. Yes. I always find that's yes, the easiest way yes, to get back yes. to the page. I mean, but you see, like like you said, knowing the game and knowing that, man, a lot of people don't think, the, the biggest thing now about doing things 10, 15, 25 years ago is that the internet is your oyster. Whatever mm -hmm. preservation, you could do that right from the comforts of your own home yeah. or from any studio or any office, yeah. anywhere. But he had, you know, he had to jump on them because he's an IT specialist. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That's so, what I'm saying. You know, while they're it, still asking him... What do you need with a website? What do you need with this? What do you need with that? He's like, okay. 
You know, see, being, watch, being, right. Being, that's you the let key. your agent but build you something, and I'm I'm already that, there. That's the key that I'm talking about. A lot of people and a lot of young folks that might look at the show is definitely going to take at hand that, you know, here there's a guy who's successful, mm-hmm. you know, not only from the computer aspects, but as far as everything he does, you pretty much seem to put your hands on thing and grab a hold of it and you take right. it to another level. These are some things that a lot of these little kids that are trying to get to where you are could cut the chase. Right. If they sit back and listen to you, you know, the, ba- the greatest teacher is to talk to somebody that's doing it or right. have done it. You know what I mean? So that's Succeeded that's or failed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Exactly. You can learn from a well, lot of persons' failures. Well, Colin right. Powell said, I read Colin Powell's book and, and um, big shout out to the general, right? Um, he said in his book, success is not measured by failure. Right. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I kind of, out of all the keys, I use that every day. I, t- I taught my daughter the same thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're successful for just even trying. Right, mm-hmm. absolutely. You know, cause especially if nobody told you how to do it and yeah. you still found a point to make your expression, that's very powerful. Absolutely. You know, and, and uh, we have to teach our people, our little kids and our young ones, that just because you've done that, don't feel, you know, because you didn't make it or whatever, you got cheated. Just pick yeah. yourself up. Get back at it again. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. You know, so how long did it take you to build your brand once you started? You, I would you get say, fired. You build your blog. Mm-hmm. I would say about solid, about five, like five years. But it was, it, it had grown before then. Okay. So, I, I, you know, I would say, because it was about, I, I would say about two to three years. Nice. But five years made it where it was like international. Two to three years of calls are coming in. Yeah. Who is this person? <clears throat> you know, a lot of my friends, mm-hmm. they the, re- the the reason they got websites was because I got the movie Fat Girls right. with Monique off of my website. Okay. <laughs> so the writer, director of Fat Girls, you know, same thing. Black male model, mm-hmm. black male actor, <laughs> you know. My website pops up. She checks it out, reads my story. Saw the pictures. Saw the pictures. <laughs> you know. really good. Best salesmanship. Yeah, there the you pictures, go. The picture's great. <laughs> Best making money while you're sleeping. Yeah. It? Yeah. You got the call around 3 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great like, story. Great story. We love the story. Get him in email. here. Email. Right. Wow. She emailed me through my website. Wow. Wow. Monique did. No, no, no. The writer oh, okay, and the director writer. Of, okay. of the film. You know, and initially I was like, ah, you know, this is somebody playing a game. Right. You know? And I didn't respond right away, right? <clears throat> and then another email. So I was like, let me just see what's up. You know, so I wrote an email back. You know, what, what production company do you work for? If so, FedEx me a script. Right. They wrote back, we're going to FedEx you a script, send us an address to send it to. Still, I'm still thinking, ah, you right. know, this is, this is just people trying to, you know. Wow. And, and you know, on the internet, you respond to things and they're like, well, really, what I wanted was a massage. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And I was wondering if you did some massages yeah, on the side. Right? You know, wow. so, so you can enlarge yourself by fifteen percent, right? Yeah, right? <laughs> like They're like, you know, we, we we'll send you the script, but we, you know, we really want a massage. Right. But, uh, so I, you know, I was just like, whatever, you know. So I sent him the address, and two days later, the script came. So I was like, Dang, wow. Okay, so they're really serious, right? So read the script, read the whole, um, you know, pitch and who's gonna be in it and all that. And then I called and I called the director and we we talked and they flew me down to LA, auditioned, flew me down again for a second audition, right. and then you know got the you know got the got to work on the film, and people started asking me like, damn, you know, you what? Did your what agent? Did you your do? agent get you just right. agent? I'm like, no, I got it off my website. Right, I'm my best agent, so you know. And they were like, how did the how did she find you? Right. I, so I'm breaking, She's looking so for thought, a black male model. That's exactly. what she said. That's what she put in, that's and that's what, what, that's she, what she found. She you know, so I told told my friends what exactly what I did, and now they have websites. You know, so and you, careers, you I would assume. Exactly. So and, now and he forgot. I charged them for their <laughs> websites. <laughs> yeah, that, you know, that was my next question. That's another exactly. thing I do. That's <laughs> did you charge dinner, a bottle of champagne? Did you? Did, did they come up with some nice little thank you? Well, not really, because you know, you know, I models, you know, 
people doing stuff for you, you don't really know how to act. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, but like, I was I was happy to do it because right. my thing is I want my friends to eat when I'm eating, right. and I don't. A lot of times, if you try to be really stingy with with your success, nothing comes to you. Nothing comes to at you. all. Yeah, you and know? then you never know when that other person might just blow up and. Let's let's give the classic example. Uh, New Jack, New Jack City. Right. Okay, where you had Ice T, and you had Chris Rock. Right. Now you got Chris Ice T coming on Chris Rock's show. Right. So you know what I'm saying? You never know how sometimes the business can finagle. You know, the point is is that you keep it real all the way up and all the way through once you're there. You know, from day one. That's right. Because you know they always say, "Be careful." What you say to someone on your way up, right? So the same person you might see the same person on the way way down. down. That's right. You know, so that's right. But it's for me, it's fun. Mm -hmm. Marketing is fun. Promotion is fun. You know, it's like a lot of times, like I have my own picture as a screensaver on my phone. That's so funny that you say. Well, it's not on my phone. You know, you it's like a campaign, right like a campaign that I did. I have it as, uh, you know, a screensaver on my phone. My baby picture is my screensaver on my phone. There you go. You're my screensaver on the house computer, though. Oh, yeah? Well, just, you know, just put it up on Facebook. I was like, this is, this is all right. This Are you going to keep it on after the show? After the show? <laughs> Listen, I do everything in two-week runs. After two <laughs> weeks, I don't know. <laughs> well, I'm gonna I call, hit you on I'm, Facebook. I'm going to call. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to call. I'm going to call and check in and make sure my, yeah. my, my picture's still up. Yeah, I'll let you know. All if right. you put a new picture up, I'll, I'll put a new picture up. Deal. All right, so I'll put a new picture up. <laughs> <laughs> hey, <laughs> but, I um, <laughs> yeah, right? I did. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's to be able to watch the business. Mm-hmm. You know, and say, okay, this is where, watch the business, watch the news, right. watch the trends, like see where things are going, right. you know, and try to, you know, stay it's ahead. Boxing, you, saw that? you know what I mean? Some boxing, <laughs> <laughs> stay, stay ahead of the game. Right. You know, be the one that sets the trends. You know, a lot of people want to write blogs, right. but... They won't be, they're not consistent with it. You know, right. if you want to get anybody to follow you, you have to write all the time. So if people go on your page, because you do blog all the time and yeah. you update your page all the time. So if someone who's a non-stalker mm. goes on. Or a stalker. They, or a stalker. Mm-hmm. I guess numbers is numbers is numbers. Hey, there you go. Um, I'm a boxer, so I can protect myself. So stalk away. Let me tell you something. That only works against other men. <laughs> women are nuts. You can roll a boxer, you want women are nuts. I, I could turn. I could turn and run. Okay. Because <laughs> women are nuts. You know, I, I know turn, I'm a woman. I could turn and take off. <laughs> turn and take off. You, you have know. to because it's a free country. Nuts. Yeah. This, so, you you actually going from the nine to five. You yeah. went into modeling and acting first. Yes. I okay. started modeling, and um, it took a while. Right. You know, I didn't just jump in and have it just take off. I got, you know, I started out, found a photographer, I asked him to take some pictures. He worked out at my gym, so I was like, you know, can you take some pictures? So okay. I took pictures, I took them around to agencies, they were like, no, no, no. Really? Yeah, because, um, you know, they, they see me and they're like, oh, he has too much muscle. He's you not, know, he won't he's be not able dark to enough for you to ever get that? Because... We need a black male. Yeah. He's like caramelly, yeah. so he's exactly. not kind light, but he's between. not dark. Exactly. He doesn't fit the thug image, and he doesn't really fit the pretty, pretty yeah. boy image. Yeah, that's got to be hard. So it was, I was right in the middle, and a lot of them would say, no, we don't really know what to do with you. Right. We don't know how to book you. So I went back, did another round of pictures, mm-hmm. went back to the agencies, same thing. They were like, well, you know come back, come back, come back. But there was this other little agency. They've long since closed down. But she gave me a chance. Okay. You know, um, she was like, let me see what, you know, let's just see what happens. Right. You know, so she sent out, you know, she submitted me for a couple of castings, and I booked my first job. It was this little jean denim company called Paco Jeans. Paco Jeans, back. that 
Sounds very <laughs> 80-ish. That was like very 80-ish, I think, right? Or early 90s? Like it was late. It was the 2000... Was it? Yeah, it was 2000. Seems much yeah, early 2001. Wow. They probably were around back then, but... They were, they were, you know, they started doing their campaigns like right around then. Wow, time has flown. Yeah, it time went under flown. though. Yeah, they did. Yeah, they did. They probably didn't stay ahead of the business. See, you know, she been helping them with their business strategy and they modeling. Stayed. They should have paid me to be a model and paid them to help them with marketing. That, that's right, because you know? you're still in business and they it's are. It's all not. about multiple streams. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Kevin, do we have some pictures? We have some pictures. Can we get? Can we flash one of those right there, real quick? Do we have a picture? Let's see. You playing? It's coming. It's coming. Anyway, anyway. So, how did your parents take this? Because at least one of your parents went to Harvard. Mm-hmm. My dad. Okay. My dad. So, so, how did the Harvard man take <laughs> his his son? Who he made sure went to UConn, yeah. not a cheap school by any stretch of imagination. Computer science, IT specialist, is not working, and now he's a male model. Mm. How did he take that? Well, the Harvard man. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he thought I had become a porn, a porn actor. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it, he did said, that cross your mind any time? Hell no. Okay, just just ask him. Hell no. I mean... But he that's what no. he thought. He, yeah. he didn't think you were actually modeling. He thought yeah. you were just what like, left. You know, like, but but they're old school, so they don't, right. they don't know what being a model means. Right. You know, so they were like, you know, it's embarrassing. My friends are Nigerian, <laughs> right. you know, so it's like, you're embarrassing right. the family. And, <laughs> How can they tell their friends that right. my son is a model? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, because <laughs> everybody's there, you know, they'll be like, oh, you know, I'm a, you know, they meet their friend. They're like, my friend, my daughter is a lawyer. My, right. my son is a doctor, you know, an engineer. And then my dad will look over and be like, my son is a, <laughs> he's a model. <laughs> <laughs> He you went know, to UConn to become a model. To become a model. What an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> you know, oh so they they did not take it well right. at all. Like, for like your mom, time, usually the mothers go, but he's my baby. If that's what you want to do, you're right. We got you. If my you, mom you is know, Nigerian, too. too. So she said, they don't play you fall and you bumped your you head. You go get a nine to five. Get a job that gets that pays you and gets you insurance. Right. That's all. I mean, if you can't I, get it together, come back home, right? Exactly. No. She didn't. She didn't even come back to Nigeria. <laughs> just stay where you at and get a My parents, they, they, they live here. Okay. Actually. They live in Maryland. You know, they. Of course, they would want me to come and live with them. Right. But that that I, I left home when I was eighteen. Right. You know, and I just I can't do it. Right. Oh, absolutely. You know, too, absolutely. Too independent. Right. Love them. Mm-hmm. You know, but um, you know, so they. They just thought that I moved to New York and <laughs> got in with the, the crazy crew, right. and the crazy people, and lost my mind. So they were like, you know, when are you gonna get a, we'll get a real job? Right. When are you going back to work? This would go on every time I spoke to them without fail. Okay, and then they saw yeah. you in the movie. No, no. This it this went on. For a long time, really. Even when, even then, you know, it wasn't until they started seeing me on TV regularly, okay, and see me in magazines or newspapers regularly. That's that my they, boy. That they were That's like, my son. okay, he can pay. <laughs> he can pay his own rent. He He's not his calling. Own He's not calling for money. Exactly. <laughs> He can pay his own rent now. He can get insurance. He can pay for his own insurance. All that. It wasn't until then. It wasn't until recently, actually. Really? Yeah. It wasn't until recently that they kind of backed off. You know, every now and then you have to let people in your in your circle know right. that this is what you're doing. You're not. There's there, there is no plan B. Right. You know, you have for you to succeed. This was actually in this Plan game, B. 
you kind of fell into it because Plan A fired you. Well, Plan A, I could have, I could have gone back to work. Right. You know, but when I got into this, I, you know, I had a, you know, one foot in, one foot out. Okay. You know, I was all, you know, I was, I was, I was doing some personal training in the beginning. Okay. And after a while, I just thought to myself. If you really want to be great at anything, you have to throw your hat in the mix. Right. You know, you can't be high, you can't half ass it. Right. Absolutely. You know, you have to go, you know, I don't know if you can say balls to the wall. Yeah, of course, because this is not, you know, some vacation. Let's go. So, you know, (laughs) balls to the wall. Balls to the wall, basically. (laughs) You know what I mean? And that's the only way that. And for me, anyway, that's the only way that I can succeed is if I don't have anything to fall back on. Right. That means on days where I'm like, damn, I'm too tired. I don't want to work out or whatever. Right. You know, like I just remember this is where this, this, this is, is work. Where, this, this is, is work. This is where my meals are going to come from. Right. So I get up and I go work out. You know, if I don't feel like blogging, I don't get paid. I, can't I don't blog. Eat. I don't you know, paid. If you know, if I don't blog, I don't build up enough of a fan base right. to do anything else. You know, if I want to possibly get a TV show, right, or or even uh, an online show like yours, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, that means I got to sell about my blog because I don't. You know what I mean? You got to get those followers, up. right? But you already have you have an existing show, so right. you have a followership. You know? Yeah, I, my numbers could be better. We'll work on that. Yeah, you know. But I'm gonna but, go back but, and watch this show like in a couple good. days, and you're gonna inspire me to do more blogging. Man, I I'm say like the sky. As long as we're alive, the sky is the limit. Right. You know what I mean? Like. I got all, I try never to make any excuses like, oh, I couldn't do it because of this or right. I couldn't do it because of that. Right. You know, like I feel like if you just keep putting one foot in front of the other, you get to where you're going. You're going to get to where you're going. So, and actually, yeah. so now, all right, so the parents are not happy. Mm-mm. Things take off. They're like, okay, all right. Mm. And then you say, at 31, which is very late in the career. <laughs> yeah. This face is making me money. The brains is making me money. I think I'll box. <laughs> this is great. You know, I, I love this because, I don't know what, most kids start boxing at 16, no, 17. No, start boxing at 9. Really? Okay. Yeah, 8, 9 years old. So by the time, some, a lot of guys turn pro at 16. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So it was kind of like, but that boxing was something you fell into. Yes. Just and it made, out of going and it to the gym and, and, and it made no sense. You know? it, apparently and, it made a lot of sense because it worked out it, for you. It did. It worked out for me. But at the time, it didn't make any sense. All right. So you know, help me out here. Yeah. The face yes. is making money. The body is making money. The brain's pulling in checks. Mm-hmm. And then you say, you know what? I'm going to throw all this money. <laughs> Into a ring to you know to possibly get hit. Destroy all. Yeah, po- you know just possibly <laughs> black eye. That's one check for at least a week or two mm-hmm. out the door. Brain damage. Brain damage. Well, I mean that's a whole di- we- that's a whole different situation. Mm-hmm. I mean just you know somebody oh, so calls a brain one. injury. Not yeah, brain damage. but I mean you know just I mean just from a, a regular physical aspect of somebody. You're a male model. You're mm-hmm. an actor. Um, I get stolen clothes and <laughs> casting calls come in. Mm, can't work for the next two weeks because yeah. of the eye. So, what made, like you said, didn't make sense, but what mm. made you decide, doesn't make sense, but I'm going with it because you're very intelligent. Mm. It doesn't make sense, but guess what? I'm going to go with it. What made me do it was I always had a dream okay. of playing sports. Okay. You know, from when I was a kid, I always wanted to play sports. And Dad didn't like that either because Dad nope. said education first. Education first, education always. And only. <laughs> And all, you know, so and also when I was when I was very young, I was always sick. Okay. You know, um, I, I don't remember any part of my childhood where I wasn't sick. I was in and out of the hospital. Really? Yeah, I had um, uh, like a terrible, like a very weak uh, respiratory system. Okay. So I was allergic to everything. I had asthma. I was, you, you know, the wow. temperature drop a little bit. I have pneumonia. Oh. You know, so I was just in and out, in and out. And um, 
So I didn't really get a chance to play sports. So it was either in the hospital, missing school. Mm-hmm. When I got out of when I got out of the hospital, I was always playing catch up. Okay. So I would be home studying all day long no while the other kids are out playing. Right. But I would hear them playing outside, and I was like, "Damn, you know, I wish, I wish I could, I wish I could." Right. But um, you know, so it always was like burning inside me to to, to get out there and play. But you know, it just didn't happen till I was uh, till I turned thirteen. But now you have siblings. Yes. So they weren't ill. No. So they're out playing. They're out playing. But not as much as other kids because we, parents you know, my were parents were all that. about studying, studying, studying. Right. But at least they could go out and you know play around a right. little bit. My parents were not into playing organized sports. They were not into playing sports professionally. Okay. None of that. If you wanted exercise, you go run around the house a couple of times right. and come and sit back at this table and get back yeah, to work. No books. You know, so. Growing up, I just didn't have that opportunity, but it was in me. Right. You know, I always wanted to do it. And um, I played basketball when I was younger, but I just, because I didn't play for as long as the other kids, I didn't get as good. I started so okay. late. But I always lifted weights okay. from, the, from the age of 14. I started lifting weights because I was so skinny. Right. And the girls, like, the bigger guys. Right. So, you know, I had to do what had I had to do. do. <laughs> 14, I wanted you know? the girls to look at me. I wanted me. the girls to like me, to right. look at me the way they looked at the other guys, right. you know? So, I started doing that, and, um, you know, it wasn't until 31, you know, I just started boxing just for fun. Mm-hmm. You know, I was just doing it just for exercise. And I just really started liking it a lot. You already said, he said 31. Yeah. This is why I asked him why he started so late, because that's very unusual. It's kind of absurd. Yeah, it is. It's, you know, the crazy thing is when I got to the boxing gym, people would laugh, you know. Really? Yeah, they would laugh because they're like, who is this guy? He's going to, he wants to do the what? He wants to do the golden gloves. Right. They would laugh. My friends would say, you're crazy. But they said the same thing when you want to go into modeling. And I acting, know, I'm sure, right? I know. So that should have been a but, sign. But to them. that was like going into boxing and doing the Golden Gloves was like the real crazy. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like you, you know, like the the, the the modeling at least they're like, oh well, you know, if it doesn't work out, right, you can go back to you know. You know but if boxing doesn't work guy, out, you might be hurt. Bo- exactly. If boxing doesn't work out, you know, brain injury, right? you know, knocked out, <laughs> you know. So they thought I really lost it. But I believe that I can use that, you know, like that anger and right. that frustration that I had as a kid. I can channel that right. through and boxing. You and, you know, God really did give me a gift and of being, a, you know, being athletic and being able to figure things out. Very quickly, too. Very quickly. And that helped me to really, you know, succeed. Right. You know? So you started boxing in actually what year? Two thousand five. Two thousand. It was October two thousand five. Wow! But this is the trick. So October two thousand five, he starts boxing at thirty one years old. Yeah. Two thousand eight rolls around, he wins his first heavyweight championship yeah. for the Golds and Gloves. Yeah. The first one. We're talking about three years. Yeah. Yeah. You know. And, and then Dad says what? And then that's as well. The crazy thing is I didn't even tell him I was boxing. Really? Yeah, when I started, I didn't tell him I was boxing. I wasn't going to tell him because I know what they're going to say. They'll say, oh, you know, you're going to get brain damage. Right. <laughs> you know, you're going to get hurt. Right. that. You're making your so money off your face. Know. You're going to mess your face up. They didn't up. even care about all that. No. They didn't even care about making money off. They just cared about brain damage and getting injured. So I didn't want to deal with that. Right. You know, it's hard enough boxing. It's hard enough sparring. Right. You know, when you spar hard, mm-hmm. you know, you get headaches. We you have know, a martial just, arts family here. Yeah. I train, my brother train. So we know we used to spar against each other, mm-hmm. although he's quite younger than me. 
So we understand the, yeah. the sparring. And yeah. It can be stressful, especially when you're fighting your younger brother. Yeah, exactly. yeah for you. Because he, he has a lot to prove. You know, all those beatings that you gave him. I didn't know I didn't beat on him. Really? Not really. Oh, okay. He's Pulling lucky. around every now. I'm two, there's two younger ones. Uh, okay. Him and another. I'm a good sister. I've got plenty of years over them. Yeah. So... You know when you know when you're a little kid, when you guys are really little, you know you kind of push him around. You know. Well, no, I'm at least twenty years <laughs> older than him, almost I twenty see. years older than him. So I didn't have to do that. You know, I was like the second mother over there, yeah. big sister mother. So I think it's more of a boy brother thing. Yeah, it wasn't until they got into their teens that they mm-hmm. kind of. Yeah. Not Brothers do more of the roughing up of the younger ones. Right. Yeah. Because, you know, with guys, every, you know, you got to stake your your place. Your territory right you know, there. You got to mark your territory. And as the younger boy is coming up, you got to be like, hey, you know. Right. This is my, this is my spot. <laughs> They're funny. Yeah. Yeah, y'all do that. So, <laughs> to the like, and, you, and you're crazy. Well, I, I deal very well with crazy <laughs> for my own reasons. Yeah. But crazy is cool around here. Mm. Um, so 2008. Yes. Fresh shit comes in. Then that wasn't good enough. You said, you know what? I enjoy boxing. Mm. I'm, I'm very good at boxing. Yeah. Let's do this at least one more year. <laughs> 2009 comes around. And you do it again. Mm. It cr- the, the crazy thing was after 2008, I was like, Yes. I did it. I won. I'm done <laughs> with boxing. But <laughs> you were done. But I was done, you know. And then I would tell people, yeah, you know, I won the gloves. And there would be like, because there are two divisions. Okay. There's novice mm-hmm. and there's open. Right. Novice is for guys who haven't won a championship and who have under 10 fights. Okay. So I came up. And I, and I won the novice division. Right. So they're like, so I would, they would say, oh, you know, you won the Golden Gloves. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm a Golden Glove champion. And they'd be like, well, you won the novice or the open? <laughs> you say, God. And I'll be like, novice. novice. Right. They'd be like, oh, that's cute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that did it, right? That and drew I was you like, right in. Like, what do you mean that's cute? They're like, you know, it's, that's it's cute. cute. Yeah. So I was Rookie. like, you know what? Exactly. <laughs> I was like, you know what? I'm going to show these dudes. Right. You know? And while I'm showing it to them, I'm going to record all of it. Nice. And that was the birth of my documentary. Okay. The first documentary, which is three rounds. Yeah. So I wanted to capture all of this to show people that you you, you can truly do anything. Wait a minute. Can they buy three rounds? Three rounds it's is not, done? It's not done yet. Actually. It's not done. Okay. Yeah, it's not done. Um, it will be done probably within the next six to eight months. Because I okay. went to Nigeria. I just came back from Nigeria. Okay. And we shot some more footage. So now we're going to, you know, finish editing all that. Can't up. wait to see that. Yeah. It will be good. So I wanted to show people that you can do anything. And I, it gave me motivation right. to train. Because nobody wants to see a documentary of a loser. Right. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> you know? So, like, some mornings I wake, I wake up and I'm like, damn. I the don't pressure of it all. Running. I'm like, but you're, you're making a documentary. You can't lose. Right. So and it's would, not finished, so we can't yeah, stop in the yeah, middle. Exactly. The story that would have been. Yeah. Should have been. Should have been. Was almost. Yeah. There's yeah. <laughs> it's a trainer that says... Um, you know, a football trainer. Mm-hmm. He would say, "Don't be a shooter with a motherfucker." <laughs> <laughs> and you remember that, right? All every day. This is beach in the head. Every day, like that's that's the best <laughs> lesson, though, man. That's mm-hmm. the best lesson. Every man. day. That's where you learn to be champion, man. You know? Every day, I, and, he, I think and it about got that. him out the bed. Yep. Because nobody wants to hear, I could have, right. I should have, right. oh, if I had done this, I could Nobody wants and to And starting do over is hard. Oh, my God. Like dropping the ball and picking and the ball back up. back up. Dropping the ball is easy, but picking it back up and starting to walk with it, more or less run with it, Damn is the hardest impossible. part. You know? So, I, so having all these things putting pressure on me mm-hmm. forced me to step my game up. You know, and and I wanted to just show these guys that I can win the open, you know, the open division, which is basically the pro the level. The pro, that's right. 
you know, like most of the guys that I beat have turned pro. Right. You know, so. You have to throw some names out there, like, who you beat that a pro now? Because uh, No, for because we'll I don't know. It. We'll okay. Leave it. We'll leave All right, it. I have to go do we'll some more research. We'll leave it. I'll blog about that later. Yes. <laughs> so they, you know, so I wanted, I wanted to really show. And, um, you know, I went in there, I trained hard, went in, mm-hmm. ran the table once again. And the finals are at Madison Square Garden, so, you good know, look. you got to put on an extra. Right. Extra good So you're a showy fighter? Because you just got to put on an extra. So you go out there, and you got the glitz, the robe, and of the course. music, and... It's entertainment. Right. You know? It's entertainment. The people pay money to come in and right. watch. You know? Like right. I never believe in... In in, in in giving a boring fight. Right. You know, like I want Not only people. the fight itself, I mean leading up to the fight. All like of I it. loved Mike Tyson, so I appreciated, you know, the towel cut out, mm-hmm. no robe, just muscle and towel, yeah. sweat. I like that. That's what walking I'm saying. Did you up, put on the No, well, you know, the walking up to the mm-hmm. ring that part That's I'm the parade. Focused. Right. I'm focused. I'm not, I don't get into all that. Okay. But once I get in the ring, right. That's showtime. That is showtime. You know, because all the pressure, all the stress now comes to this. And there's so many people that you're yeah. carrying from the trainer in your corner. Yeah, yeah. Like the gym's and name. Friends, and you know, all the yeah. friends that would come and support you. While and they're down there watching. And, you know, people and, in the, and the cool thing about when you fight at the garden, the crowd is so close to Right. You. That you know, when I was coming out, people would come up and give me hugs, right. and you know, it was it was it was it was a lot of fun. It was a lot right. of fun. And this last one that I did, I wanted to really enjoy it. Okay. Because once the bell rings, you don't remember. Right. And you're healing your business. Yeah. That's it. So before the bell rung, you know, I, I danced around, you know, like I waved to people. Right. Because I really <laughs> wanted to remember it. Right. You know, so I took my time. As opposed to the first year, I was just like, ring that bell, let's go. <laughs> you know, so and that's I wanted to. And people on your side, right? Hmm? Like that whole show, the waving and yeah. you get people on your side. People. Yeah, you, you know, exactly. People in the audience that didn't know who you were. Right. You know, you wave, you know, you get them involved, and it's more fun for them because right. now they have somebody to root for. Right. You know, so they went in there, did my thing, won, and, um, you know, now. I won. He's so humble. <laughs> Everybody comes to me to play humble. I did my thing, I won. <laughs> He won the open division, the pro division. Yeah. Of the Golden Gloves. Of the Golden Gloves. Hello, 2008, he had just won the novice. He was just a rookie the, the year before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. A lot of, you know, a lot of, a lot of guys would do, would take other, you know, would take on other fights just to mm-hmm. prepare. Right. Like I, I was focused on the Golden Gloves because that's the biggest amateur tournament outside right. of the Olympics. Right. You know? So I knew that if I could win the open division, then I'm the man, so, the so, man. so to speak. And the man you, you are, that, I'm sure, because that is the daily news. That hits every major yeah. paper, almost as if it is and a it's, pro, and it, and pro, it's te- pro and it's, fight. And it's televised. Right, and it's televised. It's televised on MSG, so a lot of fighters come even from Europe. Okay. And all over the country to do the New York Golden Gloves. Okay, so but in 2009, Bob, these are the gloves right here. These yeah. are the gloves. He walked in. I was like, hmm, are those the gloves? Those are them, 2008, 2009. So 2009, you get your second belt, and then you say what? This is it? I did it? Ha, ha, ha. I showed you off like, all y'all who talking crap. I did it. Now what? Actually, I aged up because really? there's a cutoff for amateur boxing. Okay. You know, and it's 35. Okay. So after I won my second one, by the time the Golden Gloves come around again, I, I would have been, yeah, I would have been too old. So really so. in four years' time. In four years you were boxing, and in four years yeah. you won your two titles, yeah. and, and was that was done. it. And yeah. that takes a lot of people a much longer time <laughs> yes. to do. There like were, there people were a ton of people, for lifetimes yeah, for, that. for real. There were a lot of people, there were a lot of guys that I fought had been boxing for 10, 12 years. Ah, oh, that must... You know, that must have felt them going... I mean, as a woman. Yeah. Your man comes home, he's been fighting since he's been like 9, 10, training since he's 9, 10, getting his head bashed in, taking some beatings, taking mm-hmm. some winnings, 
And then he comes home to say, I lost to a dude that's been fighting since two years ago. <laughs> that, what? It's, I'm leaving. It depends sure, on what sure kind of woman, because you know she's straight hood. She's going to be like, well, I, I knew you was going to get your ass kicked. Yeah. yeah. What's his name? I'm going to go find him. And we're like, Tyro, Tyro kicked your ass. Yeah. <laughs> Are you crazy? I'm going to fight you. Like, I, I just can't imagine yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, she might even feel up like she wanted to raise up. What I said? Yeah, right? like, What you say to me? You know some dude who started boxing like, six months ago beat you? Baby, I'm going My outside. Man. Yeah, Don't say nothing to me. <laughs> baby, I'm going outside. Is, you like, ain't going nowhere. Yeah. The craziest thing would be like, you let a model? <laughs> Oh what? my God! You little model. A model. What's his name? I'm googling him. <laughs> He's a, a model. model. Beat you. Yeah, that must. He's have been, a model. That must have been hard. Oh, I would have loved to have been, cause I know me, and I'm, I'm really laid back. Mm-hmm. I'm really like, oh, you know, no, yeah, that could not have been the story. No. The story would have been, I slipped, I fell, he hit me, he didn't really knock me out. Like, tell me something. Yeah, because coming home to tell me that a model who started boxing two years prior, mm-hmm. a model, who started bar- beat you? Are you crazy? Go get a job. <laughs> That's what I said. Give it yeah, up. Yeah, give it up. <laughs> I don't want to hear nothing about how tough you are. Get a job or get out. I don't, something. In the meantime, yo. Here's the apron. <laughs> go sweep uh, the floor. Yeah. <laughs> go, go. Here's go, the go, apron. Go make me some soup. Yeah. Here's the apron. What are you getting ready to do? I'm going to the gym. Because I feel like somebody should be able to protect you. You know? Nah, it was. It was <laughs> what, what was your most strategic fight? The one like, you know, dang, I don't want to fight this dude. I don't want to fight this dude again. You know what I mean? Was What was your most strategic ones? I know you had a few knockouts and yeah. you you did work. You took championship with that. There's always one boxer that, like, gave you know, him you gave him respect. Like, yo, oh, man, what an awfully good fighter he was. You know, I, you know, is there a fighter that you during that time that you give a little props to? I give every single one of them props. Wow. Yeah. That's every so nice. single one of them props because... It takes so nice. balls. Right. Balls to the wall. To get in that ring. I'm going to use that. Balls it, to the it walls, takes, I like that. It takes balls to get in that ring. So I give any... Because listen, you don't know who you're going to fight. Right. So you you know, you know, got to have some major balls to say, I don't care who it is, I'm so but I'm going to get in that ring and fight them. That's number one. And it takes balls to train for it. Right. You know, there's right. a lot of pain... Is a lot of is a lot is a lot of beating on your body, literally. Yeah, because there's a lot in, of guys that are actually sparring partners that are that are actually better than the actual yeah, boxers, exactly. and they beat on you because yeah. you have to be able to take a hit. Yeah. So without you crippling. go through all that, and then you get to the fight. So right. I give every single one of them credit. The guy that I fought in the '08 finals. Mm-hmm. You know, he he was a tough, 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 tough dude. And I knew it. Right. Great condition. You know, he, sp- he fought a guy um, in the semifinals, a guy that was taller than me. Okay. And he beat him down. But you beat him. He beat him down. But I trained, you know, I trained a little extra when I knew, you knew that to I fight was going to fight him. You know, we game planned. Right, him, for that fight. Like, for two weeks. Right. We game plan him. You know, we ran more. Right. And we knew exactly what, you know, we watched him. We watched I was going to say, how much of yeah. it is actually, because you, you know, you do your physical training, mm-hmm. but like with us with the tournaments, we have tapes and tapes and tapes of my yeah. brother's tournaments and tapes of people that we know he's going to run into, into other tournaments when he was yeah. on the circuit. Outside of your physical training, how much of that is sitting and studying fighters? Because it's just as important as the yeah, physical. Yeah, but I, you know, I do it more than most other fighters. Like right. I watch boxing, especially back then. I watch boxing every day. You're a true student. Every day, like I would watch how to throw a perfect jab, right? How to throw a perfect cross, how to throw this, how to, you know, everything right. I wanted to. Are be you perfect. a mirror boxer? You like when those men of like course. to stand in the mirror and you have to watch be. yourself, right? Because if you don't have a mirror, you don't know if you're doing it wrong. Okay. And it's, you know, and the boxing is it's a performance just like anything else. Dancers use mirrors. Right. Models have to you better know what face you're making right. so you use a mirror. Right. Yeah, no, there's there's a mirrors. lot of techniques, man, in yeah. boxing. Right, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. You get you have to know what your face is doing at every single time. 
okay, so while you're boxing, it's, at any point in your boxing, you say, okay, I'm good at this. I'm got to win because I got to win. Mm-hmm. But I also got to protect this investment for the, my other career. Oh, with that, we work, <laughs> we work so much in defense. Right. Our game plan is hit and don't get hit. Right. Because if, if, if we're fighting and you don't hit me at all, right. and I hit you one time, right. I win. Nice. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. So my thing is we work hard on defense. I'm, when I'm throwing punches, you can't throw back. Right. So I throw a lot of punches. Right. You know, so I stay very busy, busy, throwing, 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 throwing. You know, so my thing is, like, I just I just refuse. Like, I could never, <clears throat> ever see myself losing. Right. It was not an option. Right. And the same thing transfers to modeling right. you know like i want to be the best at doing it i want to be you know <clears throat> remembered right you know tyson beckford was the first mm-hmm. supermodel right i wasn't a tyson beckford you know? fanatic at all i, I actually was, i actually I was really? i was and I, I, I was and i respected him and i still do because i respected his craft i just wasn't like where the women were like tripping over themselves mm. i was just like mm. you know what like, what i liked was that he was he was different from everybody right. else he was dark right and he was he's a big guy like, too yeah, ain't no mistake he was he was a pioneer let's let's right. just keep oh, it absolutely. on the plane he was you know, a pioneer like, that's what i'm saying like absolutely. he like, and, and you know like <clears throat> See, the, the reason why I gave him so much props is he maintained it. But guess what? You know? So what? Because he doesn't have two best-selling calendars, does he? No, he doesn't. Guess who does? Me. And he can't box either. either. No. <laughs> he can't box either. He's not a two-time Golden Glove he's, champion. He's two-time not. Golden Glove you champion. Know? He's not. He, is, he surely is not. Now, is he? But I give, but I give props where it's due. No, absolutely, where it's due. absolutely. But this is not, and this is not I about res- him. I, I respect I, pioneers. I respect his craft. Yeah. Uh, again, definitely pioneer. He definitely yeah. kicked open the door mm-hmm. because he wasn't, you know, light skin, green eyes, yeah. passable, yeah. and he wasn't extra dog, bull headed, like you know. Yeah. He and he was thick lips. Mm-hmm. He was a black man. Yeah. The features and everything. So yeah, we definitely give it there. But at the end of the day, it's my show. It's Ingo's show. Yeah. And um, no, he doesn't have two championship titles, and you do. Yeah. And he doesn't have two best-selling calendars. Yes. He, which and you too. Three. Three. I only know he about ain't two. got sneaky yeah. commercials. Wait a minute, hold he on. Got wait videos wait with Bob Costas. Yeah, he goes, <laughs> you know what? Everybody that comes up here. Somebody brings me song, music, CD. Ah. Uh, See, the thing is, I came from sparring. I I'm, came from the gym. I'm going to try. I'm going to drop a tea or something, I think. I will, I will come back and hand deliver it. I want the best that? calendar. And I want I'll it autographed. I'll hand deliver it, sign it, place it right in your hand. How about that? Got my eyelashes. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, this is this is true. He does. He is. Um, did all three make the top sellers? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Where can they get yeah. those on your website, or can they go like? Because Barnes Nobles does carry yeah. calendars. Can they get them from? No, a major they were outlet? they were on my they were available on my site, but it's um, the last one I made was a 2011 calendar. So well, it's, we just came I, out in 2011. We set them down, but I they can still them get them down. until 2012. Is well, done. they you know if they write in, if they write in, I'll send I'll send out you know, the more people that will call in, the more people that write, will get a calendar. Get some get some. Uh, a calendar. A calendar going. Yeah. So it's 2012 in the making? Yeah. 2012 well, 2013. Calendar? What happened to 2012 calendar? Because, um, you know, like I have so many projects that I'm working on. Okay. I'm working on the documentary. I'm trying to get that done. Right. I have, you know, like a whole few projects that I'm working on. But the 2013 calendar is going to be really special because I'm going to shoot it in Nigeria. <gasps> that's going to be beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. I know so that's going to be gonna beautiful. So it's going to be 12 different locations. Okay. You know, like different parts of, of Nigeria. That's you know, going to be, be awesome. It'll be an amazing calendar. I'll right. call it Ingo 2013 Coming Home. That's going to be amazing. Yeah. Be I can't nice. wait. Is 2012 over yet? <laughs> it's going to be nice. <laughs> it's 2012. What are we? What's today's date? Damn it. We'll, we'll fast forward. <laughs> we'll fa- we'll no, fast we're going to take our time, but we're going to. 
savor the idea mm. of a 2013 Ingo Calza. It'll be that? nice. It'll be nice. I'll, uh, I'll put that on the reminder list for my girlfriends. Make sure everybody. <laughs> I'll post a picture every now and again. Say, remember this guy? 2013, calendar coming. Yes. But, so, okay, let's jump into the documentary. We, we, we talked about the first one. Your boxing career. Mm -hmm. And that'll be done in six to eight months. Yes. Yes. Okay. It's, uh, the idea for three rounds was three phases of my life. Okay. First round, life in Nigeria. Okay. Second, second round, life in the United States. Mm -hmm. Third round, going home. Okay. So it comes full circle, three rounds, three rounds with, with the number of rounds in the Golden Gloves. Okay. So it ties in life and my uh, accomplishments in boxing. Now, life in Nigeria, you moved here when you were 18. 18, yeah. yeah. That's amazing. Your father has a heavy accent? Say that again? Your father still has a heavy accent? Oh, yeah, my dad, my mom. My brothers don't really have their accents anymore. My older brother is here. He's in Chicago. Yeah. Uh, my younger brother lives in London. He has a. He's British, got to have a British accent. He has a British accent. Everybody goes over there, picks it up. Yeah. It's stuck with him, like going yeah. to the south or something. And there are a lot of Nigerians in in London. Too. Are there? Yeah, a lot. I just thought they were heavy populated by Jamaicans. There are a lot of Jamaicans too. You know, they all a lot like to of say Jamaicans that they're and Africans. They like they they like to say they're English. And they're the Jamaican. Nigerians do too. They, God, yeah, you know they don't people. they don't claim their Nigerianness right away. Really? Yeah, yeah, no, nah, yeah. There are a lot of a lot of a lot of guys, a lot of not guys, but guys and girls. Right. You know, you ask them where they're from, they're like, "I'm from England." You know? <laughs> I'm like, "No, you're not." Really, know, right? You know, I know exactly where you're from. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I'm sure you know Jamaica. I, I I thought Jamaicans were more into like I'm Jamaican. You know? Well they are now because it's like some type of fad especially here in the Bronx where mm -hmm. everybody wants to be Jamaican but back in like the 70s and 80s well 80s for me um, when there was only like a handful mm -hmm. around you know nobody wanted to be like from the hood in Jamaica mm -hmm. they were all you know I, was, I went to school in England now everybody wants to be tough Jamaican yeah. so they're all from Kingston or wherever the nearest hood is supposed to be you know what I mean? And it's well, we know Goodwill, a lot of them never even... Hell no. Never. Hood the hood. And, and, and the thing is, everybody follows what's cool right now. Right. What's a fad, you know? It'll be like, back then, they probably denied that they were Jamaican. Right. But now, everybody, everybody. likes everybody likes reggae, right. you know, dance hall. Everybody's got so the So now it's cool to be Jamaican. Ah, oh, it's amazing how it goes you know? around here. So. so how was life growing up in Nigeria? That, I mean, you got to, so, because part of that is going to be part of the documentary. So mm -hmm. you got, you mm -hmm. got to take actual pictures from your hometown. Yeah, and exactly. You have people the talking about, I remember I Ingo when he was little. You know, talking to third grade yeah. teacher. I don't know about the teacher. Okay. You know, <laughs> they don't have nice things to say uh, about you? They might. They, they might. If you have to say they might, so, that sounds like a no. No, they, they probably do. They probably do. I was, I, I was, I was, I was a good student. You yeah, know, but we were a good kid. But I don't think that was, I don't think that's interesting. Oh, uh, really? You know, I think that, you know, like seeing where I got into my first... Like I was, I was bullied as a, you know when I was really? younger. Really? Because you yeah, were sick. I was so skinny, you know, and uh, I was younger than most of the kids mm -hmm. that were in my class. So I was younger and right. small. Right. So they would always pick on me and try to pick fights with me. I would always fight back. Right. But I lost most of those fights because right. I was so I was so much you know yeah, weaker. weaker right. Than I was. So. so it was, you know, it went on for, for a long, long time, time, and then there was this one, one kid, kid that kept, kept bugging, bugging me. And, and I was like, all right, you know, this is what we're, we're going to fight. fight. Right. So, so we went, we went, we went, we went, we went fight fight the fight <laughs> Okay. <laughs> because there were the teachers, right. nobody there to, to watch and break, break you up. So we went there, his friends, my friends, my old brother, my just to make sure that nobody tried to jump in. Right, right. So... Um, so I started, I started taking my shirt off, fight, fight, and he kind of like bum rushed me. Really? Bum rushed me, tried to tie me to the ground. I got, I got up, up and I pushed, pushed him, him off, and I said, listen, this is, this is, this is this keeping fair. fair. Right. And then people jumped up and said, hey, it's not fair. So, 
Did you win yeah, that league? Yeah, I did. And, and that, that was, that was, that was my, my first, first win. win. Okay. And everybody, everybody left me alone. I, I bet. bet. And that, and that was it. So I want to show where that happened. Right. Show where right. I went to school, you know. Maybe not to the teachers. 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 You know, you know it, it'll be it'll be interesting to see here. Can you go to the middle? It'll be like it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I'm like, you're gonna see something good. Yeah. Right. 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 Yeah. Nigeria, Nigeria when I went back because okay. my, my charity is being and I'm really pushing it in right. Nigeria. We're going to talk about that yeah. too because yeah. we need so, donations to be sent in. Yeah. So, so I'll, you know, we'll, we'll talk, talk to the, the kids and pictures, you know, you know, with, you know, with the body of young boxers, boxers in Nigeria. Right. So, I think, I think that, that would be for a good story. story. That's that's a, it sounds great. It sounds great. So now you have another documentary that you're working on. Right, trying to the will. No, no uh, actually. Uh oh. No, no, no. Okay. okay. Actually, not. Okay. Um, three, three rounds, rounds was, was going to be called Triumph of Will. So it's the same it's documentary. It's the same documentary. Okay. But, but I, I have to change, change the name. Why? Because um, I didn't do great enough research, research to, to find, find out that. that Somebody already took the name? No. Uh -uh. Even worse. Uh, the the Triumph of the World, world was, was in the name of a famous um, Nazi propaganda. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! Yeah. Wait! Huge Nazi oh, propaganda. Wait! Could you see how that pulled over? Yeah. Yeah. Whoa! Yeah. How did you find it here? I had a few of my friends who were Jewish call me. And they were like, I don't think you should use that name. I'm like, why? And they told me why. Because they were in the culture, so they were like, on the phone. He doesn't know. So immediately, I changed to Jesus, changed everything. Wow. Yeah. It's yeah. on the triangle of the world. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is three, three rounds. And the, and the crazy, crazy thing, thing is, is that, that was, was a perfect thing they made. Yeah. 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 It, it was. It was just a triangle. You know, right. I love myself. Well, that's like three rounds. That's so very appropriate. Yeah. Three rounds is great, too. Absolutely. Because I even thought it was like a long search. Yeah. Yeah, it has to like double check because that was almost a major, major issue. Could you imagine? You were like, I probably wouldn't have been able to put it out. Right. Oh my God, I see some protests. You probably, you probably didn't put, put it out independently, but you by yourself always explain it. No, no, no. Yeah. 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 That's good that you have friends like that. You didn't even know. So you didn't even think of it. Right. So then the other side was people might want them out to see to see if it was the same the same film or, you know, what exactly is this kind of rhetoric they spewing and it's all about that was not. Yeah, it was good just not to have to answer any questions. I bet. Keep it, you know, fresh, no, you know. Right. No problem. So, so, but there is a three map. Okay, so there's only one documentary being shot, no second documentary. No, no. Not for now. Yeah, we gotta get this one first. Let's get this one first. This is my first one, and, you know, you learn a lot in doing your first film project. You know, you, know, you have, have to build a team. And, you know, you, know, you got to learn, learn how to tell a story. Right. You know, learn how to get, get it out. out. So, learn it as, as I go. go. Nice. Well, I'm going to show you a couple pictures now. We've been talking. This is your chat for a while. Let me just take a break because I'm going to show you. Take a break. I'm going to show you the gloves video. Oh, nice. I'm show that real quick. You know, know that. Then we'll, then we'll come, come right, right back, back. Because, you know, unfortunately, we lost our streamer, you stream right now. now.
For some reason, I guess it's a traffic thing, so I'll record it into the system. So, so, so we take a quick break and we'll come back. We'll be back. We'll be back in what, what, three minutes? Yeah, about that. All right. Yeah. See you in a minute. Yeah, yeah, stop, stop. Oh, yeah. 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 My name is Ngoli Ngo Okafo. I was born in Framingham, Massachusetts. My dad was getting his PhD from Harvard at the time that I was born. I was raised in Anambra State, which is in the Igbo-speaking region of Nigeria. I was always so sick in my childhood, just always so weak. I was deprived of what all the other kids were enjoying. I would hear them playing right outside my window. I was just so frustrated to not be normal. That frustration turned slowly into anger and that anger just grew into rage. I moved over to the US when I was 18. Years later, I found my passion and I found boxing. I started out just hitting the bag. I would visualize that if I could hit the bag and have the bag explode, that's what I wanted. I wanted to put my fist through the bag. I wanted to put my fist through my opponents. And I wanted them to feel my pain. I wanted to feel my anger, my rage, my frustration. Every time that I was in the ring sparring, I wanted them to fear me. I wanted them to be terrified when they saw me in that ring. Or even when I was hitting the bag, I didn't want them to want to spar me. And I started to build a reputation as, as a monster, as a guy, as a monster in the ring, the killer in the ring. I want to go back home and give back to the country, to the land, and to the people that have given me so much, to the people that made me who I am today. You know, I wouldn't be who I am today if it weren't for Nigeria, if it weren't for the fact that I was African, if I hadn't learned the culture, seen the hardship that is, that exists in Nigeria. I just had them on my back and I just couldn't let them down. So no matter how hard they hit me, I just kept coming and coming and coming. And I knew, I knew that they couldn't withstand the fury and the anger and the passion that I had. And coming from Africa is what gave me that. So I want to go home and I want to give back and I want to build boxing gyms because I, I believe that if you give kids an outlet, if you give them an athletic outlet, a way to get out all that energy in several boxing gyms in Nigeria will help these kids take them off the streets and give them something to look forward to, give them a dream to aspire to. And I feel like this is what my calling is. Excuse me. You look like a guy who's concerned about his body. Do you take any supplements to enhance your workouts? What, you mean like steroids? Actually, there are a number of substances which, while technically not steroids, have been banned by most sports organizations. What do you think about that? I just eat a protein bar, dude. How do you respond to those who say that mandatory testing is really the only way to truly level the playing field? What playing field? I'm an accountant. were enjoying. I would hear them playing right outside my window. I was just so frustrated.
Excuse me. You look like a guy who's concerned about his body. Do you take any supplements to enhance your workouts? What, you mean like steroids? Actually, there are a number of substances which, while technically not steroids, have been banned by most sports organizations. What do you think about that? I just eat a protein bar, dude. How do you respond to those who say that mandatory testing is really the only way to truly level the playing field? What playing field? I'm an accountant. Excuse me. You look like I was concerned. We're back. We hope you enjoyed those clips. Don't play no games. Don't do it. 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 Don't Thank God, no. <laughs> because I might end up jail. Oh, we don't want that. We don't want that. But, uh, but, but no, no, it's. it's you see, the thing about fighting is, especially, especially on the street, 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 is if, if someone, someone knows, knows that, that it's, it's not, not going to be an easy fight, fight right. you'd rather just, just not get into it. Or just shut up and just keep going. Just keep going. Because you're going to get punished. Yeah, you're going to get punished. But, you know, I'm usually very nice, calm. Right. Calm. Yeah, yeah, I don't want any trouble. Not very wrong. No, not at all. Because there's no need for it. Right. 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 In, in, in the street, street you, you never, never know, know what weapons, weapons somebody's carrying, right. knife, right. Right. pieces right. of glass, razors. You, know, you don't know. You know, now you know, have, a, have, have a career, a career to be. That's, that's right. right. So so that's right. Know, right. You know, unless, unless I have, I have to defend myself. Right. Right. You know what I mean? Like, like if somebody steps, steps to me on some more like disrespectful type of, you know, you know. Behavior, and then of course, we're going to deal with it. You know, we're going to deal with it. I'm quite sure uh, 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 you know, uh, you know, you know so, so there's, there's like, like level A. Okay, okay, I can't. I know you don't stop me, but you know what? I'm going to walk away. Right, right, right. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
sometimes it's hard because it's for, you know, we're glad that they're hard and, you know, get the name a lot even more. So, well, you know, when that time comes, comes, comes you know, I'm sure I'll be able to deal with it, you know what I mean? Let that time come, let that be a pleasant thing in the world, you know, that's the part that we strive to be. Yeah. That's, 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 for me, I, it's so funny because how do you hold the title? I mean, you've done major commercials. Mm -hmm. You did it mad yeah, with, with Mary J. Blige and Little Kim. Mm -hmm. You've done the rebound with Kathy and Zayda Jones. You've done a lot of things like movie, commercials, TV shows. shows. I mean, major. That's 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 well. Major. major um, that's a great tip. No, I'm going to take it down. You can take it. It's also a little shooting. But, you know, major magazines, Men House, W, Fortune, your name, your face, and your name has been featured, and you're still able to move around. I mean, I mean, that's kind of expected because there's a lot of Grammy Award winning and Oscar winning, moving around without the makeup that kind of hard to detect. So, and New Yorkers, Yorkers don't care. care. Right. You know what I mean? New Yorkers are like, this is not a star to me. Right. Yeah, right. Right. I'm not going to go crazy over you. Right. right. I'm not going to go crazy over you. You got to go to Westchester. That's just his advantage. He had everybody in the industry. I'll tell you, I was a star in Omaha. I want to stop you there. You know, I'm not going to go to Omaha. Funny. That's funny. It, it is. It is. It is. It is. It's it's everything and everybody. And, everybody. and you're right. Everybody, everybody is a celebrity or a star. Or so oh, yeah. But we have, yeah. we have to cross this last topic because this is like the most important one we'll build today. And that, and that will be your foundation, foundation which is Swamp Health and Kids. Yes. That's so, 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 so important. important. You know, yeah. um, let's talk about that. I, um, I lost, I lost my youngest brother, Easter, um, in 2011. Wow. And um, after that happened, he was only 29 years old. Mm -hmm. So when that happened, I just realized that life, life is too short. Right. You know, you hear the day, you move on to the day. Right. You know, so when that happened, I just realized that life is too short. You know, you hear the day, you move on to the day. Right. So you just made me realize that I have, I have to, whatever, whatever it is that I say that I want to do, do, I have to do it now. Right. You know, I can't, I can't wait, wait for next week, next month, month next year, tomorrow, or someone, yeah. yeah. So, so I just, I just said, said to myself, myself, I have to do, do this now. Right. You know, so, so once, once I came, came back from the uh, uh, studio, I'll take care of the studio in London, came back, went back to work, set up the foundation. And, uh, you know, anyone that knows, knows that setting up a charity is a lot of work. And it takes a long time. Okay. But I was determined, and I just, I just, I just kept, kept pushing, 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 and I had it registered and set up within a few months. Champion Spirit Foundation. It's Champion Spirit Foundation because, basically, I am a champion, and I believe that anybody, if, if I, I could, could do, do it, anybody, anybody can do it. You know, you know anybody, anybody can be a champion as long as they're willing, willing to work, work hard right. and allow themselves to dream. You can do, do anything. Right. You know? So, so I, I want, want to give that opportunity, opportunity to underprivileged kids in Nigeria. Nigeria. Get to grow up, up in Nigeria. Nigeria. A lot, a lot of times, you know, they have, they don't have a whole lot going on, so they get into trouble. It's just kind of like anywhere else, right, right. you know? But, but I, felt I felt that having them learn boxing, whether, whether they, they choose, choose to become, become fighters or not, right. but, but just, just give them, uh, we, you know, know, we, we want, want to either build, build a facility, facility or acquire a building, building and we refurbish it and put equipment in there. Yeah. And teach the kids boxing, boys and girls, boys and girls, boys and girls, yeah. Yeah, boys boys and girls free. free. Okay. Somewhere an after school program, program where they can come in and, and learn the values of boxing, boxing. Right. Learn, learn hard work, learn, learn how, how to persevere, you know, you know learn, learn how to focus. focus. Oh, that's yeah. Yeah. Boxing. And, and if they, if they, if they, this, 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 this,
you know? know? And, and if, if they, 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 they choose, choose to become fighters, fighters who knows? Who knows? You, you know? know? Who wants to go open? But see, when this is like great, this is like this one is. Support them, you know? know. We, we might, might even, even what, 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 what I'm really planning, planning on doing, doing is to have, have the Nigerian, Nigerian logo nice. So the Nigerian logo of champion, champion, champion would come, come over. If I hear you. Ooh, wee. Give him a chance to travel. Give him a chance to get out and possibly turn pro and help their fellows. And most of all, like you said, Confidence, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. as a fighter, when you train, you dedicate yourself, and you train in any kind of way. Uh, a lot of times, you know how to defend yourself when you walk in the street. You're not afraid to walk anywhere. You're not afraid to step up in the place. You know what I'm saying? It's a certain character. Because you. Walk with your head like, don't walk with me. I'm not looking for a walk with you. Know, I, 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 I walk, I walk, anywhere I walk, I walk with feelings. And I don't walk with a lot of people. And I've been in a lot of crazy places, man. And, and, and just because of my lack of knowledge, I mean, I see things different than what people do. I'm more aware, I'm more, I'm more observed. And a lot of that comes from years and years of just training. And the training you never forget. You know what I'm saying? And you know, there's this. You always, always go, go back, back to a certain point, point where you remember something your technique that that, that, that that got you from a situation, and that's how you avoid it. You know what I mean? So there's a certain confidence, man, definitely. That, that, especially our kids need, need to have. have you know what I mean? Because, because a lot of times you have structure, sport, whether it's a team sport, an individual sport, the discipline carries over to the sport. You know, sometimes kids need that sports is out. To yeah, I put, put you on punishment. Mm -hmm. You on punishment. No football for this week. Oh, right. <laughs> right. 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 And when, when you come, come in there, you're going to learn respect, and that, that respect, respect transfers, transfers to the hands. Right. Yeah, because the coach doesn't say, how could you fight, how could you jump? You know, they can yeah. slide yeah. on you yeah. in a yeah. second. Yeah. Yeah. I, remember I remember when I went to Nigeria. I went to, went to the boxing, boxing gym in Nigeria. Nigeria. Mm. And in, in a typical, typical boxing, boxing fashion, fashion, when, when I, showed I showed up to the gym, gym Unfortunately, I showed up a little bit late. Right. And then the trainer, trainer was like, why don't you pick your back? I was like, you know, they were prepared, prepared waiting for right. you. Know? You know? And, and he, he was, was like, like, you need to be on time. Right. right. So, so they, they don't, don't care right. who you are, if you're a star, or whatever you are. You are. If you're if walking, walking in the boxing gym, gym, you show up on time. Right. And on time, you need 15 minutes early. Exactly. Not walking in the gym at 6 o'clock. It means you get it in, gloves on, and you're ready, ready to go. go. That's, That's right. right. And, 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 and that's the discipline. And, and whenever, whenever I, get I get into the box, box whenever, whenever I get, I get into the gym, gym, I go right to the studio. Right. I don't know anything. Just hear you learn, hear you learn, whatever you have to say. You know, that's the only way. And to teach kids, to teach kids that, would change, change your lives. Absolutely. And make them better than you release. Absolutely. So that's why I want to set up this charity and make sure, sure and I'll, I'll be going back, back to Nigeria, Nigeria very often because, because I, I want, want this charity to stick. I don't want, I want it to be like a year day, day or next week kind of thing. Right. I, want I want it to become, become a part of the system. system. Right. You know, so, so I'll be going very often and then, you know, to see some of the pictures from, from when, when I was in Nigeria in December, please go to my website, www.getmego.com, G-E-T-I-N-G-O.com, and click on the charity button. I keep on looking over it. So, 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 Please go and it's only don't just come and look. Yeah. You know, everybody, everybody else helps this. How about we help our own? You know, go and don't give. Please give. Whatever you do. We're not saying take your last, but, you know, five, six, twenty, square fifty, square hundred, whatever it is. You know, send it over. Encourage your kids to do a little drive or something, you know. Send our kids are very fortunate here. 
you know. Yeah. Yeah. So it's time to help all the children. The program is set in place to help kids here in the U.S. Right. Programs such as those are rare. Right. Right, right now. In the right. Right. That's why we you know, had that interest in foundation yeah. up. Yeah. Yeah. And, I and I feel, feel like, like if, if I can make change, change then, then other people, people Shirt and pants. Yeah, so we take, take that, that, and we, you know, yeah, we, we, we want help. We want help. Yes. We, we need help. Yeah, yeah. 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 why yeah. when, 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 when we ourselves yes. want help? We look somebody to help us. Yes. So, so how about there? We know that there's someone else that needs help, and we help them. How about that? So, www.getangle.com. G T I N G L. Look at the charity part of the page. Completely don't. Yeah, it adds up. It adds up fast. So, if you can get it, it might be $20. I mean, pack of cigarettes. That would be beautiful. I'm going home. I'm going home tomorrow. I'm serious. We need it. Any little bit that we can. Anything. I'm going to go on next weekend and get a pack of calories. I'm going to go back tomorrow. Oh, I got my cows and that I'm going to go twice. You know? You can't help with the sale on Nah, we took them down to the years old. Yeah. They could be collectors. They could be collectors. True. Sure. I'm sure I'm like, wait, 2013, he's about 11 miles. He's got money in his foundation, so I'm thinking... A picture's a picture's a picture. How about, you know, maybe there's somebody out there that didn't know who was thinking of in 2010. Oh, okay. And maybe they will, they don't care about 2010. Maybe they just want the pictures. Right. Have you seen these pictures? Okay, you're a picture. I've seen these pictures. And I know, I can get less about 2010. Calendar. But if I can get pictures of 2010, that might be worth $20 or something. That's a good idea. So we could put it back up. Collectors are Yeah. Deal. 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 Please don't donate. This is it. It needs to be stopped. That's what it needs to be stopped. Take it on out, man. It's easy like this. It just goes so quick. I mean, you know, two hours of change. So we're going to wind it down, I guess. You know? Well, it's up to everyone. First of all, to you. Everybody watching. Thank you. Hi, 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 hi. 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 So you, know, so you find, find out what we have going on, on and, and, and uh, hit me up on Facebook, hit me up on Twitter, Cash and Go, Twitter, Facebook, and go to Lukafa. So you can find me. Hit me up everywhere. Google. Yes. That's the name of Google. Black Mail. Black Mail. Wow. I'm thinking you can use Google Energy O. 
If you, you Google, Google NGO, NGO we'll pull, pull up like non-governmental organizations. Really? Okay, so let's go do that. Let's Google black male models. models. And, and then, then click, click on, on my website. website and it comes up. It'll come up with like number three or four. Okay. Bam. Yeah. Just like that. Yeah. I told you. Worldwide. 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 So I can take this out of you. Yep, yep, yep. Let's get on out. See y'all a couple of weeks, babies. Later. See you. Tonight's main event is for the New York State Heavyweight Championship. Yeah! Come on! Talk to the body! Yeah! Come on, Zach! from Mr. Slater. Oh, okay. Um, where is he? Your bags are being packed upstairs. There's a car outside. Excuse me. You look like a guy who's concerned about his body. Do you take any supplements to enhance your workouts? What, you mean like steroids? Actually, there are a number of substances which, while technically not steroids, have been banned by most sports organizations. What do you think about that? I just eat a protein bar, dude. How do you respond to those who say that mandatory testing is really the only way to truly level the playing field? What playing field? I'm an accountant. Nice. You're really on it today. I'm stressed. I'm the boss now. Big boss. It's all me. It's scary. Keep your hands up. I'm excited about this. New book. Author's a client. I think it's going to be huge. Oprah huge. Okay, everybody, let's pair off. You and you first. <sighs> oh, Olivia. I think you killed him. Boys having a party over at this new club. You was gonna go chill out over there, you know, bug out, check out the honeys. Yo, you in? You in? No way. You heard what the man said. It's nice of you to make an appearance. I thought we were tight. I've been busy, you know, laying low. Got a couple big games coming up. You guys ready to get your groove on or what? Yo, I'm not much of a drink. That's all right. Listen, we got something for everybody. I see. Remember, mi casa, su casa. Thank you. 